Theorel of Island Caprice number 32 step-by-step -step tutorial part 3 rhythm trills and grace notes that's a lot of things to deal with and so as always divide and conquer so we're going to simplify something right so that we can focus on specifically on the rhythm aspect and how to play trills and grace notes within those rhythms therefore what I would like to do today I would like to actually drop the bottom voice all together. We're gonna keep the bowings as they are, but we're gonna play only the top voice, right? Because if you look, most of the complex rhythm patterns are happening in the top voice, right? And so what you would do, I highly encourage you to turn on the metronome and I'm going to play just the top voice. Ready, go. etudes where you have to do with complex rhythms and what's coming up in the next etude it seems like this is kind of I've seen that being a stumbling block for a lot of students sometimes not because they can't count it but just because they don't notice it so as you can see in measure three we have triplets right all of a sudden we have to switch from regular four Fourth, where each quarter has two eighth notes, all of a sudden we have to start feeling the triplets. So in that case, what I highly recommend, the quarter note rest right before that third measure, I would switch to feeling the triplets there, right? So let me show you. So here we are from the beginning. saying a triplet right so this is what is going on inside my head of course when I'm performing I'm not going to say it out loud but that rest is the best place to switch yourself from thinking one and two and three and four and two triple it triple it triple it right so if you can do that then once you start the next measure, it's very easy to figure out how long or how short those triplets are supposed to be, right? Now let's look at the trills and grace notes. So the trills are pretty straightforward here. And for example, uh, I know there's a lot of controversy whether to start a trill from top or from the bottom, but in this particular case, your previous note is B flat. So to me, it doesn't make sense to try to start it from the top if you want to hear it, right? Um, I think I, I'm more concerned in this agent, I'm more concerned about performing the grace notes correctly, right? And if you look at the grace notes, they're not slashed through. You've probably seen in your music those grace notes that are slashed through. And some of them are just, they're just written small. So you know they're grace notes, but they, there's no slash. So in classical music period, which is, uh, if we're thinking Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, right? So in that era um, of music, uh, this, the tradition was that if the grace note is slashed, then you just play a really short grace note. But if it's not slashed, then you have to play it for as long as that particular value requires, right? So for example, in this place, right? If I am beating, I'm gonna beat eighth notes. So if you look at this particular part, this particular measure, the grace notes are D, A flat, R, 16th notes. So if these are eighth notes, that means they have to take up a whole eighth note, right? So that's why this measure would sound like this. Not 
Because I know it sounds like the grace notes are too long. And there are quite a few parts here, places like that. But technically, according to classical period rules for grace notes, they're not. Because they are straight 16th notes and they're not slash through. Now, normally I wouldn't think of it as a huge mistake if someone played them shorter or much longer. But I know that in the past the TMAA rules were quite strict about that in some all region, all state agents in Texas. And so I, have, I remember reading on TMA website how important it is to perform the grace notes according to the tradition and so forth. So in case if that is important to you, uh, and if you would like to be very strict about performing your grace note, notes exactly according with the, this tradition of this style, then I would keep them as long as they are, you know, the values as they look. Uh, because again, because they're not slashed through. So that is one of the things that is very good to count out with your metronome. So in this case, I would encourage you to practice with your metronome set on eighth notes for this etude because there's so many different values here. You know, you have your eighth, sixteenths, thirty seconds, and um, that sometimes is very easily confused. And uh, when you are counting in eighth notes, it's a little bit more manageable. The only warning I want to give you, don't forget that you are beating, that your metronome is set on eighth notes, because that happens to me very often. I would set it on an eighth note, and then when the music gets slower, I forget that it's an eighth note, and I start counting as a quarter, right? So we don't want that. So just number one, set your metronome on eighth notes, and number two, make sure and remember that these are eighth notes, and just count all of your passive work, all of your melody, your uh, triplets, your sextuplets, your 32nd notes according to metronome. Again, I would chunk it, I would divide it into chunks so I don't get too overwhelmed because it's very easy to lose focus when you have to count so much. And I would just do it one chunk at a time. And then the best way to make sure and mistake proof your own practice when you feel that you've mastered the jump, I would turn on the metronome and then record myself playing that passage with the metronome and then take the music and listen and watch the music and make sure that you didn't make any mistakes as far as rhythms or intonation are concerned. And you would be amazed at how helpful that will be to you because if you accidentally were counting something too fast or too slow, once you are not playing but just listening to yourself and watching the music i think it will be very easy for you to spot those parts that have been mistaken and then you can easily fix those now one thing i highly recommend that you mark spots where you tend to make mistakes in rhythm or intonation and just practice those little spots separately and that's pretty much it once you are very comfortable with that you can then add the bottom voice and coordinate that with the bottom voice and you'll be fine. It'll be just great if you can do that. This is it for now. Have a wonderful week and keep practicing.